Hi again then guys and welcome to a kind of throwback countdown video actually to one of the most popular videos I've ever done on the channel and the other video was for Gran Turismo 6. 15 cool things that you might not have known about in Gran Turismo 6 but now we're naturally moving on to GT Sport with 10 interesting little bits of information, little tips, little tricks that you might not have been aware of in the world of GT Sport. And of course, chances are, just like with Gran Turismo 6, if you have been playing the game since day one, as many of you guys and gals here on the channel have been, then of course you will be aware of many of these already, and many of you will probably already be aware of all of these. But for those who maybe could benefit from them, it's still beneficial. So without any further ado, let's get into the top 10 cool things you may not know about in GT Sport. Number 1 Number one is actually that even though the 360 camera rotation was removed from the beta version of Gran Turismo Sport before the full game itself was released, which is incredibly annoying because it's always a cool feature to have, you actually still can change the camera's movement in relation to the car. And going into the options menu while driving the vehicle can kind of give you the option of going from, of course, one extreme to the other, but to some degree allowing the car's camera movement to feel somewhere between as rigid as it would have been in, for instance, Gran Turismo 4, but then you can make it much looser and much more flowing, and especially for drifting that makes a huge difference because it gives it more of a kind of Forza vibe where the axis of the car can actually move, you can even see the sides of the car when you're turning really heavily sometimes, so it's a good thing to bear in mind if you prefer that more flowing visual experience. Number two. Point number two is another one which many people already know about at this point, but is still hugely important for endurance racing, both in the game itself, especially if you create a custom event, but also in online sport mode and lobbies as well. And again, many people do know about this, but I have heard quite a few comments, a surprising amount in fact, from people who don't know that you can do this in GT Sport, and that is you can assign buttons to the controller, and this is something which we're going to revisit again in this video, the topic of assigning buttons to do stuff, and actually scroll through car settings while you're driving. And of course that can be beneficial not just for stuff like changing traction control and changing ABS settings, but also, and this is the crucial point here, actually leaning out or richening up the fuel while you're driving in an endurance race. Now this option is not present all the time, for instance in a shorter event or a time trial, but in endurance races it makes a huge difference. And as you can see on screen, it actually allows you to see how many approximate laps and how much of a percentage amount of fuel you have left, which is a hugely beneficial thing. Of course you will sacrifice some performance by leaning out the fuel, but you will go longer between pit stops. And of course for the right car on the right track, it's essential to use this kind of strategy. Number three. Number three is actually something which I've discussed before in my everything you need to know about the paint mode video. And that is, and again, this is something that a lot of people don't seem to realize, you can actually use the livery editor to paint seemingly uneditable parts of the car, but not just stuff like the license plate, even carbon fiber components such as chin splitters, aspects of the rear diffuser, and even the wing on certain cars can indeed be painted as well. Number four. Number four is actually one of the more interesting points on this list that many people probably haven't realized if you haven't played through the driving school section of the game. And that is that if you actually achieve all gold medals, in that driving school, you will unlock a car that you cannot access from anywhere else in the game. And that is the Nissan GTR pace car or safety car. And of course, there are a number of safety or pace car style vehicles in the game, including the Mercedes, the BMW, etc. But the difference with the Nissan is that you cannot get this one from the dealership or from the mileage exchange. And if you want this car, that's how you get it. Number five. 
Number five is a slightly more trivial tip or trick that I'm going to give to you, but it's one which nonetheless many people don't realize. And in a funny kind of way, this is similar to how there were secret NASCARs in Gran Turismo 6, just by looking under a different section of the dealership. On this occasion, it's not so much cars that you can drive, but it is that there are actually other cars in the game that you can look at, but not actually drive. And that is in particular in photo mode, because... You have the scapes locations to take photographs of various cars. But what many people seem to never realize in the first place more often than not is that in many of these individual manufacturer dealerships, there are actually cars in those scapes locations, scapes locations which incidentally are not under the normal photo mode menu, which are not in the game. Stuff like the Aston Martin Valkyrie, various Nissan models that aren't in the game, and even from other manufacturers too. So as I said, they're not cars that you can actually drive, but it makes for a very very cool looking photo mode location when you can actually have it with a car which technically isn't fully in the game. Number six. Number six is a tip or trick which still baffles me that so many people don't realize that you can do it and actually it's a relatively recent one, recent being a few months now, in terms of being fully usable in the game and that is that you can actually set your wheel or your controller to assign a button to the boost function. And although on many cars this doesn't do anything on certain vehicles, it actually is very important. For instance, the Super Formula cars have the overtake boost, and also, of course, most notably, the Tomahawks have a boost system which you need to assign a button for to be able to use. And the difference that this boost system makes when assigned to a button is massive. The Tomahawk X, for instance, can only achieve around 375 miles per hour without it, but if you engage that boost button, you can exceed 400 easily. So it makes a massive difference to certain cars in the game, especially those that have that boost or curs or overtake function. Number seven. Number seven is actually a tip or trick which I personally realized myself quite a while ago and I'm not sure how many people actually realize this because it's a very beneficial one and it's one of the ways that the community actually works on more of a kind of selfless on a basis in some ways more than just selfishly trying to get as many views and likes as you can on your stuff. And this tip that I'm going to give you is that to unlock certain achievements in your profile, not the PlayStation achievements, but the in-game achievements for stuff like photo likes, livery likes, that kind of stuff, you will actually find that you can level up these achievements far more rapidly if you like other people's stuff than for people liking your stuff. So for instance, you could have hundreds of liveries and also hundreds of photos, but still not see any significant increase in the numbers until you actually start liking other people's liveries and other people's photos. For me, for instance, that got those achievements to go way up much more quickly, and I think a lot of people don't realize this, even though it's a pretty simple tip. Number eight. Number eight is another very, very familiar one to many players and also pretty much any aficionado of the scapes or photo mode use in Gran Turismo Sport. But again, I still get people asking me, how do you get cars to look like they're moving or driving in scapes locations? Many people still don't realize how to do this. Well, it's actually very simple. You just go to the second menu in those scapes locations, be it from a replay of a race or even in a legitimate photo mode locale, and then you click panning shot settings. Once you've done that, you can select the car that you want to focus in on, and then if you go to the previous menu, you can even set the driving speed of the vehicle. Once you then take the photo, you'll see that the car is in action. Number nine. My ninth tip or trick is actually probably one of the most obscure on this list, one which many people who even have been playing the game since day one might not have noticed, and this is kind of a throwback to Gran Turismo 4 even, where you could go into the garage menu, then press the start button, or the pause button, and it would actually allow you to tune the car from right there in the garage menu. And this particular tip or trick is kind of a throwback to that, because if you were in any of the sub-menu 
reviews of the game, such as the brand dealerships, or the general scapes menu, or whatever the case may be, if you press the options button on your controller or on your wheel, it immediately takes you to your profile page. And this is such a simple thing that many people don't seem to realize, and it's easier basically, and quicker than jumping all the way back through to the home menu every single time you want to do this. So wherever you are, hit the options button, and it takes you straight there. And finally, number 10. And last but definitely not least, that, as I said, number 10 is that you can move the camera around in a much more literal sense in the livery editor in particular than many people think. And again, this is something which I've referenced in my everything you need to know about the livery editor video, but many people know, pretty much everyone knows, that you can rotate the camera around the car 360 degrees, you can look on the top, whatever you want, but if you actually press the, I believe it's either R1 or L1 buttons, depending on how you've got it set up in the game, you can physically move the camera using the left joystick around the car. So not so much the 360 degree rotation, but actually the physical placement of the camera in relation to the car can change. And that's something which can be very beneficial when you're trying to get those weird little angles on painting a car. And so overall, that's it for my top 10 tips and tricks and interesting little tidbits of information that you might not have realized about Gran Turismo Sport. So of course, I'd love to hear your little tips and tricks that you like to use down below. Maybe there are some that weren't featured here that you think should have been. Tell me about those below. And of course, if there were any here that you were not aware of that you plan to use, I'm glad it helped and I hope it does help out. But of course, stick around on the channel for more hints, tips and tricks for GT Sport breaking news, car reviews, and plenty of other kinds of stuff as well. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.